Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Managing Disruptive Change. A little recap, what do we know right now? We've seen companies that were disrupted, companies that adapted, disruptors. We had a theoretical perspective on that. Uh, we said you need a toolkit. And uh, we started with that toolkit and said, okay, the first thing you need to know is understand where the disruption could potentially come from. But there are many, many influences in today's world that we said, okay, we structure those influences. And with the structure of that influences, we can go in deeper into also structuring reactions. So we saw last week, which are the sources of disruptions could be, we clustered them into four dimensions. And we also saw that there's not only one tendency coming up. There are many, many tendencies, many, many potential innovations, disruptions coming up at the same time. Remember the Mercedes example. And if you want to work with that, you have to understand how they collectively might disrupt your business model. So having said that, this week we'll see how we can build patterns based on the different influences, actually from those four dimensions, and how these patterns are influenced by specific constellations of sources of disruptions. Remember the dimensions? These were the four dimensions we structured last week. So we saw all the influences, and we say, okay, the first dimension might be competition, the second customer behavior, um, so which is more the market side. Then we have a technology side, which is over here, and we have regulation as a driver of change. As said, sometimes it's not only one influence that influences your company or impacts your business model. Sometimes it comes out of more than one or all dimensions together. In order to do the next step now, what we have to do is we have to assess the respective source of disruption in terms of four dimensions and identify the specific disruption pattern. So again, in our flow chart, we started with step one. We got aware of the potential disruption. We know what influences are there on my respective industry what happens, what might change right now. Now, what we're doing is we try to structure them further in order to show patterns, which help us a lot better to show an individual reaction. I will introduce the six patterns we identified um, based on the potential disruptions within the four dimensions. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to introduce those six patterns on a very basic level and within the following videos I will go deeper into each of those patterns. So let's start with the first pattern. The first pattern is the industry and the market is outpacing your company. So the industry is just faster than your individual company, which we have in the market of fast fashion. Some companies are able to change their collections faster than others. This is a typical outpacing. So, or if you're a cyclist, someone is just riding faster than yourself. First pattern. Second pattern, new substitutes attracting competitors. So you have a market like the TV market, but now people are also watching video on demand. People don't watch TV anymore. This guy is alone watching a bicycle race and all others watching different races. The third pattern, changing rules of the game, is the insurance industry has been the power industry in the past. So where regulation change the entire business by, for example, introducing deregulation in the insurance market, public transportation, there was uh, some deregulation introduced in Germany, 
and now we have also buses going from A to B, which we basically know in other countries. So changing the rules of the game, people are not only riding the bicycle, but they can also run. If it's faster, it's a, it's a different question, but that's the third pattern. The fourth pattern is drowning in competing op options. And kindness fee is probably very typical for that. We have many, many options of potential influences, of potential disruptions. And we have to very specifically look at them and try to understand which we follow, where we put our dollars on. The fifth pattern is vanishing resources slash capabilities and market fit. So in Germany, for example, we had very, very successful mail order companies who were sending catalogs to the users and, and oh, users, I'm saying users, to the potential customers. These people were looking into catalogs and they were placing the orders by telephone. Nowadays, everything is happening on the internet um, and what you can do is you can vanish your old catalog business resources capabilities to the new market fit. So this is the fifth pattern. And the sixth pattern is increasing consolidation along the value chain. Having talked about the insurance industry, insurance companies, if they sell you car insurance, they try to sell you more in the value chain. For example, there are car insurance companies who also have car repair companies, or at least have contracts with car repair companies where they consolidate along the value chain. And this is the sixth pattern. Don't be afraid if you don't understand these patterns, we go deeper into each pattern, but for this moment, I'd like to give you a general picture. Because this is number two, identifying the specific disruption pattern. And if you have identified the specific disruption pattern, now you can also try to understand where the disruption comes from. And in this first disruption pattern, industry market outpacing my company, it's a technology that might be the starting point driving that, but then the customer and competitor behavior changes. We talked about the fashion market before and this is a typical example for that. In the second pattern, new substitutes attracting competitors. It is basically the market, the competitors and customer behavior that changes and that drives that change. So you need a different reaction to that. Changing rules of the game starts with deregulation, which is, has been taken up by some of the competitors. Number four, drowning competing options probably starts everywhere. This is why you drown in those options. You have a deregulation in the market, which will especially be when autonomous driving is really introduced, that it is allowed all over the world. You have new technologies like the electronic combustion or electronic engines. You have customers who want to want to do that and you have a Tesla who is pushing that forward. So from each dimension which we identified in last week, pressure is coming up. The fifth pattern, it's vanishing resources slash capabilities and market fit. It's a question of technology and customer behavior. So the change starts with technology we have the internet and now those old catalog businesses have to go into the internet because customers want to buy from the internet, they don't want to wait for the catalog. And the last one, increasing consolidation along the value chain with the insurance company example. Insurance companies are deregulated right now, so there's a part of deregulation in that. Um, there's new technology coming up, there's no ways of interacting with customers in the insurance business and, and the market wants that. And this is the general idea. So these are the six patterns, disruption patterns, which you can identify. If you look at all the disruptions out there, if you structure them into the four dimensions 
And then if you, and this is to be seen over here, if you look at the four dimensions more closely um, and the combination of the four dimensions in practice, you will see that they lead to six patterns in total. But don't be afraid if you didn't get it all. Uh, we go deeper into each pattern and with the help of that, where you understand which situation you might find yourself in.